We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We just uh, delve into our second conversation here. Now, with the big question we're asking is, will there be uh, a repeat of 2012, where you had Okupa Nigeria, a social political movement that took to the streets on Monday to 2nd, to be very precise, of January 2012, in response to field subsidy removal by the federal government of President Goodluck Jonathan, on Sunday, the 1st of January 2012. Well, uh, the essence of that big question is that the Nigerian Labour Congress, as the NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, the TUC, have threatened to embark on strike action or strike uh, in June against the incoming administration of President elect uh, Bola Tunubu over the removal of fuel subsidy. Now, the two labour bodies, however, said that the only condition not to go on strike is the revitalization of government refineries across the countries and then we have four of these refineries and allowances of modular refineries now according to the organized labor the failure to do this would bring its opposition to the subsidy removal and mobilize workers to protest against the decision now, it's important to note that President Buhari had stated that subsidy on petrol would be removed before the end of its tenure on May the 29th of 2023, just in a few more months. And, uh, the president of the National Union of Local Government Employees has said that the union remains opposed to the removal of fuel subsidy. Now, it feels like a lot of unions are in support of the NLC. Uh, but it is also important to note that over 1.48 trillion naira was reportedly spent in maintaining uh, the countries for refineries between 2015 and 2020. And at the time, Sarap had threatened a lawsuit against the president and his administration. The government was also reportedly to have spent 10.23 billion naira in June 2020 on three refineries that produced zero crude. And also in 2021, the government had approved 1.5 billion that's about 600 billion naira uh, to repair the Port Harcourt refinery now despite all of these funds the huge spending on the refineries we still have these refineries not working and while fuel scarcity continue to persist so um, this morning we have a guest joining us Amechi Asu Guni who is a former department I see that as department uh, president of NLC and industrial relations expert this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, you're welcome. Former Deputy President of NSC. All right, then our correction is duly noted. But um, I'd like to share your thoughts. What do you think about this consensus of NLC revitalization of the refineries and also the fact that they plan to oppose uh, the incoming government come June? Yes, I think uh, the capture is what is actually giving me the concerns. NSC does not oppose anybody, but we oppose anti people's policy. And therefore, when a president elect has not resumed but had told Nigerians, one of the things he will be doing includes removal of subsidy. And he has not told Nigerians how he will fix the refineries. I think that was why he's getting the uh, this preparation in advance. Nigeria Labour Congress, I believe and I know, took that decision long ago. At a point, it was collectively taken with TUC that the only way to force the end of government do what is right by putting the finalists to work is to refuse them from eating deep again for removal of subsidy because removal of subsidy again goes to who? And so now that they are paying it, at least where it's reduced for common Nigerians. But if you are removing it, make the product available. You cannot remove subsidy on the ground that we are seeing exporting finished product of PMS. That will take the price higher than we are suffering now. And that, I think that is why they are resisting it. And every Nigerian will give them back up for that. No, but, um, I mean, we remember that in 2012, there was also, you know, a protest that was led by prominent Nigerians, including, you know, this current president or this government was opposed to that removal of subsidy. And then we're continuing the conversation. So if you juxtapose how much we're spending on uh, subsidy removal, I mean, to maintain uh, paying subsidy and removing it, don't you think that there's a justification that subsidy should be removed? 
the justification of removing subsidy is not even the issue now. The issue now is why were they paying subsidy? They were paying subsidy because the idea is that average Nigeria spend more on food items and whatever that goes to petrol of inflation or price hike in petrol affect transportation, affect goods and services. And then government decided in their wisdom then to pay subsidy for a while. Then begin to producing this uh, local product. Unfortunately, to today, even the 2012 argument or syndrome was uh, at a point became political. But the consistency of NSC has been let the product be available. Then remove subsidy because subsidy is that government has failed to make the product work or rather refinery work, and as such, taking the product to outside the country to make it uh, refined has added additional price to it and they are saying okay we will pay part of this price to enable nigerians uh, be able to procure now you are, you have not made the product available for us and you want to remove your responsibility so uh, who are we going to run to consider the diesel the diesel is uh, has been deregulated completely that there, there, there is no more subsidy on diesel how much are we buying diesel now? The minimum you can get diesel now is 800 naira per liter. So that is the pure example of what will happen to PMS. Anytime government remove their hand and say they don't have business in this, then average operators of that sector will take advantage and freeze the price at, at will. The Dangote refinery is just one. And uh, the, the, the location is in, in, is in the southwest. How do you expect somebody in the far north to come and procure from Dangote and not sell at a higher price. And Dangote at that point will freeze price at his own will. Don't forget the man has said he's going to export his product. So nobody will, government will have little or nothing to do by regulating price for him. So our work is government should not de-associate himself from his primary duties. Welfare of Nigerians include the cost of their living. So the government must work. So I think that is the, the essence that government must pay attention to. There is no contest whether the incoming or the outgoing will be facing it or not. If you are doing what is right, you will get the full cooperation of labor and Nigerians. But if you start on the wrong note, then your battle begins with you. So I, I want to understand what the interest of labor, you know, the Nigerian Labor Congress is here, because if there was an opposition to the removal of fuel subsidy in 2012, now, up until this moment, there's still intention to oppose the removal of fuel subsidy. Now, some of the concerns that they have raised in recent time is the revitalization. I really don't know if, you know, the NLC is in sync with what's going on. Because if you look at the budgetary allocation or the expenditure that this government has uh, been on up until the point where you have some civil society group threatening arrest uh, between 2015 to about 2020, the Nigerian government had reportedly spent 1.48 trillion naira on revitalizing our you know refineries so what exactly is nlc talking about revitalization of you know the refineries because funds and allocations have been given to revitalizing our refineries so uh, do you think that you know nlc it's even in sync with what's going on completely nlc is in tandem with uh, the current happenings what I think we are getting missed here is uh, the agenda of government not, not targeted to achieving results. Because when, you, when we talk about whether you revitalize or you rehabilitate, the way we are looking at it to overhaul whatever time they use. What NSC is saying is up until now, several years to today, Refineries have been meant to work. These are not refineries that uh, they, are, they, they were not and up to now are not under construction. They, we are working at a point. So what happened? How can government assist its own facility to be jeopardized only because few persons want to be exporting this crude oil and make profit by returning half and then claiming the, the, the full balance? We are saying that whether you spend one point 
uh, in a month. If you remove subsidy, where will you channel the money to? It will still go to a few. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, we are not saying removal of subsidy is a crime. As a matter of fact, it's overdue. It is even criminal from beginning to be assuming to be paying subsidy at the point we say they were not paying. So you don't know who is actually trading with our money. So when they call this value, that they have spent this value of money, investigate and you'll be sure that not all the money were used for subsidy. Nigerians are telling you the, 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 the total consumption we, we are currently consuming and not what is reflecting with NNPC. So different figures, they job all these things, they know what they're doing. So, no, so, 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 I, so I'm thinking that, uh, Amechi, honestly, yeah. if, we, if we want to be very honest with this conversation, you want to agree with me that this is, this is, I mean, we resisted, Nigerians resisted, including the NLC resisted this particular uh, move in 2012. And some people think that if we had gone ahead with it, probably would have actually headed somewhere. But if the NLC is saying that the reason they would not go and back on that strike if there's revitalization of government refineries, we're saying that funds have been allocated to re revitalize. But these refineries are not revitalized. So exactly what are we saying? Is NLC asking the right question? Are they demanding? Should NLC not be asking where are the funds? The monies that we have allocated to refine, you know, to revitalize these refineries, where are they? How come these refineries have have not been you know revitalized we talk about the time turnaround maintenance where is it going is nlc really really pressing the actual issues or they're just you know trying to say hey we want to revitalize not looking at the critical issue itself because there's every other time there's plans for revitalization there's turnaround maintenance conversation and we're also talking about funds that are released to that effect Yet the refineries are not working. NLC has have that really been asking or fighting the actual cost for Niger Nigerians, talking about having the refineries working and following the process to the latter. Yeah, you, in fact, you have you have just uh, you have just supported the cause of NLC. Now, government had told us repeatedly of fund release for the revitalization and uh, to ensure that these refineries work. Over time, this statement has not reflected the actual. And that is why NSC is saying, until we see it work, we are not going to entertain any request of government with regards to refinery removal, or subsidy removal, because that tells you, fund has been allocated, not just, we are not talking about millions of dollars, we are talking about billions of dollars have been spent on refinery. Till today, it's not working. That tells you and I that the corruption is deep. So if we don't actually hold the hand of government the way they are holding it now, it will not work. Removal of subsidy will rather give them more money. Same corruption, the way they have been channeling. But when has government told us about the workers in this in, in these refineries? We have workers. The size of workers, the number of workers has not reduced to today. So they are paying them for what? is not working and we're paying staff that government has, uh, has put in place till today the sector is still filled with workers and they are almost like dormant uh, Amechi Asuguni, uh, we have to go, right? Uh, we will continue this conversation soon because it's very important and would like to, you know, still have you uh, converse or have this conversation with us. Thank you. All right, then uh, Amechi is a former uh, Dep Deputy President of the NLC and Industrial Relations Expert. He joined us this morning uh, via phone to talk about the concerns of, you know, the NLC. NLC is saying that, hey, we will embark on strike come June, resisting any plan to remove subsidy. But again, we're saying, is NLC asking the actual question? If you are asking for revitalization, the plans and funds have been approved over time for revitalization. Should NLC not be asking what is going on with the funds that have been released for revitalization and how come the refineries are not functioning despite you know these funds that have been allocated and on this premise we're saying we want a functional refinery up until that point we will not because if you say you're asking for revitalization i'm sure there are pepper works and funds to that effect but yet we don't have a, ref a, a functional refinery but that's why we you know uh take a break when we return we'll be joining the newsroom uh for the news brief at 
nine o'clock. It's important that you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do be part of a conversation via all the social media platforms on YouTube. We're at uh, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Abuko. Have a great morning. <laughs>